In this video, we are going to work on a very small and a very interesting AWS project where we are going to send emails to our customers. So this is a very common requirement where customers will place an order on your website and you want to notify the customers via email about that order. So to achieve, to solve this problem, we will use three different AWS service. The first one will be SQS. So we will use the SQS UI to push a message into our SQS queue. Once the message is received in the queue, then a AWS Lambda will be configured with this SQS and this Lambda will pull the message from the SQS queue. As part of this Lambda code execution, it will process that message and it will send an email to your customer via the simple email service. So this is a very small and simple exercise and let's do a hands-on of this exercise. I will strongly suggest everyone to do a hands-on of this exercise. It will just take five minutes but it will give you a good perspective of how things integrate with AW, within AWS and how easy they are to consume these services. So for the hands-on, we will log in into the AWS console and in the search bar, you have to search for SQS. So the first thing that we will do is we will create a SQS queue. Click on the create queue button and create a standard queue. The only thing that you have to specify is the name of the queue. So I will give it a name email queue and go through all of the default options and just say create a queue. Okay. So our, our queue got created and SQS is a serverless service and for this exercise you will not have to pay any money if you are in the free tier of AWS. Now the second thing that we will do is we will create our lambda function. But for the lambda function to work correctly, we will need to create a IAM rule. Why do we need this IAM rule? Because a lambda will be connecting with the SQS service and also to the simple email service. And for connecting to these two services, it should have the required permissions to access these services. And for that, we will have to create a IAM rule. So we will go back to our console. We will type IAM in the search bar and we will open IAM in a new tab. Here on the IAM page, you will have to go to the roles section and here we will create a new role. Here we will select AWS service and here we will select Lambda and then click on the next button. On this button, we will first search for SQS and press enter. Here we will select the third option AWS Lambda SQS queue execution role. Then we will search for SES and press enter. We will say Amazon SES full access. Once we have made these two selections, then we will click on the next button. Here we will give it a name Lambda SQS email SQS SES testing. And we will just say create our role. And now once the role is created, we will go into the search bar and search for Lambda. And we will open the Lambda service in a new tab. 
so now we are going to create a new function author from scratch give this a name sqs email and we are going to use a python runtime so select python 3.10 from here and we will change the default execution role and we will say use an existing role and we will select the role that we have created and create a function now in this function we will have to provide the python code which will send an email to the customer and for that i have my code which is present in my github project so from there i will copy this piece of code and i will provide the link of this code in the description section of the video and i will go back into my lambda screen and i will paste the code that we have got and if you look at this code this is basically reading the message that we have got from the sqs so this record is nothing but a message that is present in the sqs and then it is sending a email via the ses sdk library i will not go into the details of the code i will just copy and paste this and i will click on deploy you will also see that we have to provide a email id here so what we will do is we will go into the configuration tab and we will go to the environment variable and add a new variable to specify the email id and give your email id to which you want to send the email save this configuration now we want to trigger this lambda when a message is sent in the sqs queue so we will click on add trigger button and we will select the source as sqs and we will select the queue that we have created we will select the queue we will say activate trigger and then we will click on add button now our lambda is ready to read the message from the sqs service so if we go back to our diagram then our queue is ready our lambda is ready to read the messages from the queue and to send an email via the simple email service sdk library the last part now is to configure the ses service so we will go back to our screen and here we will search for s e s simple email service and we will open it in a new tab now what we will do is we will go to the verified identity section and we will create a identity here you will have to provide the email address to which you want to send the email select email address and provide the email address to which you want to send the email the reason for doing this is aws doesn't want this email service to be abused by the users so that's why they ask to verify the email address to which the email will be sent so we will create a identity here and you will see that the status is ident verification pending so what will happen is once you create this identity you will get a email on your email id and you will get a link on which you will have to click so that you can verify that you are the person who owns this account so i will go to my email and here i will see 
an email from AWS. We'll click on this email and there is this verification link. So let's click on this link and it will say that you have successfully verified an email address. We will go back to our service and we will refresh this page. And hopefully here we will see the status as verified. So again, I am repeating this point that this is not a production environment. This is a sandbox environment. And in this environment, AWS wants you to verify the email address before you can send an email. Okay. Now this is done and we will go back to our queue and now we will try to send a message in our queue. I will click on this button send and receive message. But before we go into this, let's go back to SES and just ensure that one thing is correct. So this email ID should be the same email ID which you have configured in your Lambda in the environment variable. So if you go to the environment variable, this email ID should be the same email ID that you have provided. Now go back to your queue and when you go to your queue, you will see this button send and receive message. So this is this is kind of a test functionality which is provided by AWS and using this functionality, you can send a message to a queue. Okay. So I will say messages testing of AWS Lambda with SQS and SES. So I will write this message and this message will be sent to your email ID. So I will click on send message. Okay. And your message has been sent and is ready to be received. So every, if everything has been configured correctly, then Hopefully, you will get a message on your email ID. So, let me go to my email and let me click on the inbox and you will see that there is an email which has been received on my email ID. And this has got the same message, Lambda SQS testing email. I can click on this and you will see that you will see this message. Testing of AWS Lambda with SQS and SES. If you run into any kind of errors, then what you should do is, you should go to your Lambda and under this, there is a section for monitoring. And here in this section, you should go to the logs section and whatever logs which have been generated by your code, you should be able to see over here. You can also click on this. So you will see here that a log got created at this time. This is the same time at which we triggered this message, this email. And you can expand this and you can see the details as to what happened. You can also click on this link, log stream link, and it will take you to CloudWatch. And here you can see the logs. Logs meaning whatever which you have put in in your code those log messages will show up over here so in my code i have put in this statement test i have also i am also printing the message that got received and i am also printing email sent as the log in my code let me show you that also so if i go to my lambda and if i click on code and here you will see those messages. I am printing test. I am printing the message body. And down below, I am printing this email sent. So all of these things that you are printing in your code, you will be able to see in the CloudWatch log. One last thing is, when you have put in your code over here, 
you have to click on the deploy button so that the code is actually deployed without clicking on the deploy button your code will not work so i think that's all for this session i hope that you find it useful so if you like this then like this if you like this project then please go and subscribe to the channel and also like this video thank you very much now the project is done but before we close on our activities the last thing we should always do is clean up the resources so what we will do is we will first go into sqs and i will go and delete my queue i will say confirm then i will go to my lambda service I will click on functions and I will select my function and I will say delete. Then I will go to my SES service and I will delete the identity that I have created. So always ensure that whatever resources that you have created, you have cleaned up once the work is done. This will ensure that you are not charged for any unnecessary services that you have triggered. I think that's all for this project. And hopefully you like this project. This was a pretty simple and easy project to work on. So if you like this video, then I will definitely suggest to go and like this video on the channel. And also if you have not subscribed, then subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.